Lesson 9.5, Word Problem Solving with Money. We can use the strategy acted out to solve word problems that involve money. We read the problem to decide what we need to find. We can use coins to model and act out the problem to show sharing, joining, or separating money amounts. We can also solve money problems by using a decimal model to shade in squares in a hundredth grid. We can solve a money problem by representing the amounts as fractions and writing an equation. Remember to look for clue words that will tell us which operation we need to use, add, subtract, multiply, or divide. I have a link in the description to a video, Clue Words and Word Problems, and the beginning of that video should be easy enough for a fourth grader to understand. Together, Emma and Tala have $1.50, and they want to share the money equally. How much will they each get? We have $1 and 2 quarters for the 50 cents. We think we need to divide the money evenly into two equal parts, one for Emma and one for Tala. And to divide the dollar bill, we exchange it for coins that equal 100 cents. One dollar is equal to four quarters. Twenty-five cents times four is equal to one dollar. So this means we can make one dollar and fifty cents with six quarters. Four quarters would be one dollar, and two quarters would be the fifty cents. And we can circle the coins to show two sets with equal value. We have three quarters here and three quarters here, that's six quarters. One person can get three quarters, which is 75 cents, and the other person will get three quarters, which is 75 cents. They'll each get three quarters as 75 cents, and they've divided it evenly. We can also exchange the money for dimes and nickels to divide it into equal shares. Ten dimes are equal to a dollar, four dimes are equal to 40 cents, and then two nickels are equal to 10 cents. And five dimes cannot be divided evenly into two equal shares because one person would get three and the other one would get two. That's not equal shares. So we use four dimes and two nickels. We can give Emma five dimes plus two dimes plus one of the nickels. And we can give Tala five dimes, then two dimes, than one nickel. They'll each get seven dimes and one nickel. They'll each get 75 cents. Can you think of another way they could have exchanged the money for different coins? They could have even used 150 pennies, couldn't they? Bob, Dave, and Tim each have 35 cents. How much money do they have together? We think we need to find the total amount of money they have together. There are three people, Bob, Dave, and Tim. They each have 35 cents. We can use repeated addition of 35 cents three times, one for each person. We can use coins to model the problem, then count the value of the coins. So we can see Bob has one quarter and two nickels, Dave has a quarter and two nickels, and Tim has a quarter and two nickels. So we add the quarters first because that's the largest coin value. We have a 25 cents and a 25 cents. Together, these are 50 cents. We have another quarter. That makes 75 cents for three of them. And then we can skip count by fives because each nickel is equal to five cents. So we have 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105 cents. We can write this as dollars and cents. They have $1.05. 105 cents is equal to $1.05 cents. We can also use a decimal model with 200th grids. We shade 35 squares for Bob, 35 squares for Dave, and 35 squares for Tim. 
When we fill all the squares of the first grid, we continue by shading the second grid because we needed to have five more for Tim, didn't we? As fractions, we have 35 hundredths plus 35 hundredths plus 35 hundredths. That's equal to 105 hundredths. They have the same denominator, so we just add the numerators. And 35 plus 35 plus 35 is equal to 105. We have 105 hundredths. We have one dollar plus five cents. We have one dollar and five cents. Sophia has two dollars and 34 cents. She has two one dollar bills, three dimes, and four pennies. And she's buying a bottle of juice that costs one dollar and 12 cents. How much will Sophia have after she pays for the juice? So we think we can use bills and coins to model $2.34. We need to subtract the amount she spent so we can remove the bills and coins worth $1.12. We can cross off $1. Then we can cross off 12 cents. We can cross off a dime for 10 cents and two pennies. That'll make 12 cents. Then we count the value of the bills and coins that are left. She has one dollar and two dimes, that's 20 cents, 21, 22 cents. She has spent a dollar 12, she has one dollar and 22 cents left. Chris has three dollars and 75 cents. He wants to put an equal amount into three envelopes. How much will he put in each envelope? And we think we need to divide $3.75 into three equal parts. And $3 is equal to three $1 bills. So he can put a dollar bill into each envelope. That's $1. And we think 75 cents, well, that's equal to three quarters. He could put a quarter in each envelope a quarter is equal to 25 cents, each envelope will have $1.25. Four boys have six dollars to share equally. How much money will each boy get? We think we need to divide six dollars into four equal parts. And we can't because there's four people and only six dollars, but we can exchange two dollars for eight quarters. One dollar is four quarters. The other dollar is four quarters. We can exchange these two dollars for eight quarters. Now we can give each of the boys a one dollar bill. There's four boys, there's four one dollar bills. And we can give them each a quarter until we've divided them evenly. We give them each one quarter and now they each have two quarters. We can see each boy will get one dollar and two quarters are equal to fifty cents. Each boy will get a dollar and fifty cents. Emma and two friends have two quarters and five nickels. If Emma and her friends share the money equally, how much will each person get? So we think we need to find the total value of the coins, then divide it evenly to three people, Emma and two friends, that's three people. And we can think five nickels as 25 cents, which is equal to one quarter. That means we have two quarters and another quarter, three quarters divided equally to three people. That means each person will get 25 cents. We need to match the problem to the operation that we can use to solve it. We need to look for clue words. Our first one says Bob had $1.30. He spent 50 cents. How much does he have left? So he spent some money and we need to know what he has left. Do you know which operation we would use? Would we use division, addition, or subtraction? 
If you said subtraction, you're right. This one says, Tala saved $1.25 each week for two weeks. How much did she save? Do you know which operation we would use to solve this? Our clue is each week for two weeks. That means she had two of $1.25. If you said addition, you're right. We would do $1.25 plus $1.25. Now this problem can actually also be solved using multiplication. We could have done $1.25 times 2, but we're not into multiplying decimals yet. That's why we said addition. This one says three boxes of cookies cost a total of $6.30. How much does each box cost? If three boxes cost $6.30, and we need to find how much each box costs, that means we need to find the price of one box. Do you know which operation we would use to solve this? If you said division, you're right. And it is the only one left, but don't let problems like this trick you. It might have two lines going to the same answer, but this is division. We would need to divide $6.30 by 3. Then we would know the price of each box. Sometimes you have to read a word problem more than once to really understand what it's asking of you, and that's okay. And if we don't have coins to use as models, we can draw a circle and put the values in each. For a quarter, we can just draw a circle and put a 25 inside. For a dime, we can draw a circle, put a 10 inside, or five for a nickel, or one for a penny. We can even make a rectangle and write a dollar in it for dollar bills. In our next lesson, 9.6, we're gonna add tenths to tenths, and we'll add hundredths to hundredths, and we'll even see how to add tenths to hundredths. I hope you have a really nice day, and keep trying, and I hope to see you the next time. Bye.